Hi friends, uh, this is uh, risk-based engineering, the lecture on uh, probabilistic approach to risk and reliability. Uh, I am Professor Prabhakar V. Varde. The major part of it is uh, um, some introduction on regression analysis and then I uh, will be explaining the, uh, this approach because I thought it is better to have a uh, numerical example to explain this approach. Uh, my personal opinion is um, this approach I have used to validate the data, its applicability uh, for very important projects. And um, um, the, um, the confidence that I got after using this approach because it was a mathematical answer to some queries actually. And um, uh, so I felt uh, if you have, uh, if you are collecting data, then it is better to uh, do a regression analysis to, uh, to check the applicability of data to a, uh, to a distribution uh, because, uh, because that sets the uh, estimation more correct, more credible and uh, it brings a lot of uh, value to the analysis. So um, we have been discussing uh, in this last four lectures that graph plotting is the, uh, the best measure, uh, approach to get an idea about a distribution but uh, uh, the, the thing is that uh, this is a approximate method and but uh, but valuable method because it gave us some idea to start with actually now if you have to uh, and in graphical method if we take some uh, approach and try to uh, answer that this is the distribution um, there is one uh, there is one uh, doubt because uh, outlier in the data sometimes they rep represent themselves as actually outlier or uh, uh, x part of the part of the data itself point number 1 point number 2 um, putting a line across the data um, is a is a, requires a uh, huge uh, judgment uh, you know because the idea is to uh, have a quality output so these two together uh, requires a mathematical approach uh, which talks uh, about itself uh, in confirming the data uh, rather than uh, giving some uh, arbitrary uh, arguments to justify our data and associated distribution. The traditional analysis also was there in which uh, we were uh, uh, required drawing a line uh, that might introduce an error of judgment just now I said this uh, for fitting the line to given data points. Uh, you know, this particular second point tells so many things, uh, uh, so, uh, uh, so many things in a very small one line actually. So it is better to go for a mathematical approach. Um, regression analysis provides a more effective approach to determine an applicable distribution to a database. Uh, we have seen uh, other methods also, um, but uh, though it is a resource intensive, um, but nowadays the professional softwares are available. So things are much easier, uh, but there is a caution here. Uh, softwares are available. The analyst should know the mathematics which is there behind the uh, behind the uh, regression uh, regression analysis without that uh, there is a good possibility that uh, there could be a wrong inference in uh, on our data or on other assumptions the least square analysis is the is central to uh, regression analysis um, so the regression equation is formulated uh, basically first step is to formulate a uh, uh, regression equation uh, and uh, for this case uh, the y is not uh, appearing very clear. So y is equal to um, beta 0 uh, plus beta 1 x1 plus beta 2 x2 beta n xn and some residual component for random error. What is uh, uh, beta y is the response variable we can say dependent or response variable uh, and uh, beta is a regression, regression coefficient whereas the error part is the random error term actually that we have used here, you know, residual part, uh, last term. Now, linear regression is performed to evaluate the uh, equation of a linear line having the form, of course, we all know that y is equal to mx plus c. And th this line will be drawn through statistical uh, data and uh, estimations. That represent that data and here 
the R square, that is coefficient of correlation, uh, is the key parameter which tells us where do we stand, okay? which shows how well uh, this line represents the data. The value of R square is, uh, ranges from 0 to 1. If the distribution is fit with the observed value the perfectly, then it do doesn't, no, doesn't happen or very rare possibility for R square is getting 1. Normally, if it is more than 0.9, then you can be sure about it that your uh, line represents the data. And now, let us see the... Uh, so, we are doing... This is a numerical example where we are doing the regression analysis. Okay. So, uh, no need to bring any subjective uh, li lines on this. We have two parameters, x and y, how they are correlated, you know. So, that we have to estimate. The, so, the uh, first column is serial number, 20 sets of data are there. there. And uh, then uh, x is one parameter uh, that is independent parameter and y is dependent parameter. So, you can say y, x axis and y axis, these values are there. Summation of x parameter is 22148 and y parameter is 1914. Uh, now, for rest of the columns, the calculations are done based on the formulation, mathematical formulation that is required. Like the first row says product of x, y, 6.98 multiply first column with the second column, you get this. x square, 4, again it is derived from the uh, second column of x, y square, again we derived from there. y cap is a basically uh, estimation, okay, minus 43.21 and uh, y, bar, y cap minus y square square. Again, we have estimation of y cap in the model and y minus y, y cap is equal to by a whole square. Okay. So, uh, all the summation, summed up values are there uh, for this particular uh, data, a set of 20 data and uh, let us see how it works. Our first aim is to fit a straight line in the given data. So, objective function is very clear. Straight line is given by y is equal to mx plus c. Now, what is the m component, what is the c component and all th that we will see. So, the gradient of the line can be given by this term. That is n into summation of x product, product y minus product of summation of x and summation of y while uh, there is a bracket here. So, n into summation of x square minus uh, summation of x square. Okay. And uh, C is the term which comes from this particular thing. Now, we have done all this summi summing up operations um, where n is the number of data points. Okay. Uh, we saw now how much uh, 20 data points. Okay. And then uh, for a given data, uh, we, uh, we get m is equal to 1.38. M I have x product y, uh, summation of x uh, into summation of y, these terms are already there actually, okay. So, uh, summation of x into summation of y and all, they are there actually. So, x square is also there. So, we got y. It is very simple. No need to go into details. Similarly, for c also, we need not go into detail. Now, let us formulate our equation that is y cap, which is nothing but an estimate of uh, our uh, objective function. y is 1.318 x, okay, from here and then 45 point minus this one. So, this is the equation of the line. All of us we know actually. Next, uh, we check if the given data po uh, points closely follow the fitting line, okay. This will give us the goodness of fit, you know. So, now r square is estimated by summation of y cap minus y bar square okay and summation of y minus y bar square where y bar is the mean value of y y bar is the 
mean value of y we get for the given data. So from here you can estimate mean of y. Okay. So uh, maybe uh, just for uh, experience you can do this statistics and the r comes 0.9328 that means the hypothesis is uh, that means the line represents the data the value of r indicate that the data closely follow the fitted line uh, okay a fitted line and as shown in the figure okay so it was coming like this only yeah so uh, now here we are representing now you can see here we might have this type of case like if you solve 15 20 problems like this ki for this it was uh, the uh, the regression coefficient was 0.9329 that means it is very much acceptable value the scattered of the data was seen around the line like this so we could not see any bias but for this point it could, so we have ignored it we call it as outlier so judging an outlier is a very very important step into uh, into uh, probabilistic modeling uh, because it is a question of experience you know so to so here the point we br bring out here is uh, like this so i think you should be able to read this is x parameter this is y parameter and this is the line and this is the slope of the line we can easily estimate what is the slope of the line uh, that is uh, m value we can uh, check whether this m value is matching with this m value okay and of course c component also can be seen actually how much c component is uh, negative in that uh, order okay so uh, the correct and applicability of the data point should be checked and should reflect the motivation and purpose of analysis domain knowledge is critical any statistical exercise or any data selection this will you will not find in any uh, statistics book or any academic books but always uh, always get a validation from the domain expert okay, these are the data points that we got and uh, please check it definitely some two three point will be out of your database and is quite also possible that two three new points will come up which you might have ignored okay so uh, and then uh, your regression value uh, after this uh, domain expert opinion will be much higher than 0.93 whatever we got so uh, any practical industrial example keep the domain expert with you uh, just to get more credibility you know only benchmark software should be used. We saw that uh, manual, manual plotting brings in uh, a component of judgment or a component of arbitrariness. Why, why, why arbitrariness? You are given a data point, you ask 10 person to draw a line. I am sure many of the uh, individuals, they will be drawing a line which is different from other. So, um, there is a good optimization exists in the software, uh, okay, before using a software, please check what are the optimization uh, tools and methods that they have used for, uh, because often it happens that op uh, software provides a very efficient answer, yeah, you, it re reduces your effort, but uh, the experience has been that uh, you better learn what are the models and methods have been used uh, before putting these results in some public domain or some governmental or some some industrial uh, management houses for management houses in case the manual process is performed for regression analysis then the calculations are verified and validated do some simple calculation so that you know uh, like uh, our c value for estimation it is showing something and here it is showing minus 50 okay so so let us see how much is the difference then try to estimate the this line's uh, uh, gradient theta value is here so 10 theta you will get the uh, gradient here 
<coughs> the final decision on the data is based on estimates of regression coefficient and this should be reflected in the confidence that need to be posed on our decision. So uh, these are the uh, outcome of this uh, analysis that we have. My experience is don't play around. Uh, nowadays uh, professional softwares are available. Check them, benchmark them and use it for any uh, removing any uncertainty in the model or methods or in the data. Okay for better representation and better use. Because most of the analysis like probabilistic risk assessment, it is being used more for dealing or modeling day-to-day -day example, inspection interval estimation, uh, uh, maintenance interval estimation, okay? And then uh, you have uh, some, uh, we'll discuss as part of the uh, risk assessment or system modeling, uh, wherein uh, these approaches, they do wonder actually. Okay, so now since this uh, uh, this lecture is the last lecture of the week, uh, fifth lecture I would say, so I am giving some uh, references uh, here. Uh, there are six, ref eight references. Of course, this lecture is based on my book, Risk Based Engineering. So my book reference can also be there uh, as part of this one. Um, use this available literature for enriching your knowledge and uh, reducing uncertainty in your results and job. Thank you very much.